Hey, look at that. Somewhat presentable down here. Isn't that cool? So, you guys know, um, if you've been following my life video series, I guess if you want to call it that, rwgresearch.com and um, all the good information thereof, um, I have decided that uh, I'm going to clean my basement, so that's what I did. I'm not done yet, but in the meantime, I don't want to keep you guys waiting for some interesting videos and information. So with that, I'm going to share with something uh, with you today that I have created a long time ago. Actually, probably about a year and a half ago, uh, maybe longer. Um, I was doing a lot of research, and I found a very interesting metal, and that is called bismuth. Okay, Here is a chunk of bismuth that I have melted down. Um, bismuth is in the lead family, and it's a very dense material. It is very, very heavy for the size, the atomic weight, I guess, is really heavy material. Um, and one interesting thing you can do with, with bismuth is create um, levitation through diamagnetic. So basically repelling forces of magnets. That's diamagnetic levitation. Okay. So I'm going to show you what I've done and how you can do it. Um, you can go online and purchase this metal. I think I bought a pound of it. I think it was like 20 bucks or something. Pretty reasonable. Come in a little ingot. An ingot. And uh, I'm going to show you how I did this, but first I'm going to show you what I'm doing. So, let's get a close-up shot here of the device that I have created. This is basically the device. Um, very easily it consists of a rod, a neodymium magnet, and two pieces of bismuth that I have melted and formed. Okay, And just a nice little plastic case that I built um, out of uh, polycarbonate, scraps of polycarbonate. Okay, Now here's what I've got. I've got this little chipped piece of magnet. This is a square neodymium magnet. Um, I actually don't know what the grades are of these things. Well, you can see it flew up and hit the magnet a few times and broke it. So what I'm going to do is find out the polarity. Now you might ask why I've got this threaded. I'll show you here in a minute. You can see I've got the polarity where it's pulling towards it. So now what we'll do, let me get a close shot for you. We will just place this in here and now it's levitating grandma flashlight oh. so you can see it a little bit better so now that we've got it levitating I'll show you what I can do with it I can grab it and let it spin and now it will just sit in there and spin. Now, you might be asking, what does this magnet up here do? Well, this is the adjustment. So I can pull it up, or I can bring it down. And that's all dependent on turning this. Alright, so this is kind of my adjustment. This does have to be adjustable. So I'll get you a close-up of the magnet. So now it's down at the, the bottom. Now I can turn this top magnet and get it to start floating. And I can get it to float up to the top until it hits. So what's actually happening here... Um, I wish I could get this camera a little bit more still. What's actually happening here is the magnet up here is actually what it's doing is just lifting the weight so it's being pulled towards this top magnet so it's just taking the weight off now when this um, this is the second highest um, diamagnetic property uh, material known to man I believe bismuth um, they actually use it in shotgun shells for dunk hunting or something so you don't poison the water with lead or something I think is actually what they use it for um, I don't know what else they use it for but what's happening is this weight is being pulled, or I'm sorry, the magnet's holding the weight of the 
a little magnet through magnetism. Now once it gets to a certain point, a balance point, it actually there's like a, this is my theory, anyway, I'm not 100% sure about how this is actually working, but basically the diamagnetic properties is like eddy currents almost, where the, the you know, you see the lines of force repelling. That's the similar response that this magnet has inside of those two pieces of bismuth. Um, so the top magnet pulls the weight, holds the weight, of that magnet and then when you get it just right it'll basically reflect or push back from the top and it will also push back from the bottom and it will just float away in there now you might be asking well if it's floating in there shouldn't uh, shouldn't that just go forever right there um, and the answer is no because you still have friction via air and I think even though that the lines of flux are bouncing in a particular order because it's north down or south up one of the two uh, or opposite of that and the magnetic lines of flux are you know parallel or floating with the magnet so therefore they should be in, not induced sideways like you'd see like eddy currents where it's be pushing back the other way. Um, it's more like a... Yeah, I don't know how to explain it. But anyway, I, I would think that it would float for a really long time if, if you didn't have air friction. But there's still some uh, diamagnetic pushback, if you will. Because it is a magnet on a diamagnetic surface. Now, there's, a, I think, a carbon graphite something or another that you can also do this with. Um, other than that, you'd have to get this uh, material super cold, a uh, type of ceramic material, and get it, get it super cold to be able to make this work like this. But this is the way to do it in room temperature. And the reason that I like it is that it really does prove a point. Let me set this camera down. It really does prove a point because there's no electrical energy here no batteries no coils no nothing and you can still this camera loves to focus on other things there we go you can still get it to levitate in there no power sources nothing like that no hidden energy and uh, a lot of people have never really seen that it's really something really cool and you can build something similar to this for uh, probably 30 bucks if you find the scrap material. Um, magnets might cost you 10 bucks or something. Um, if you are curious, I believe that's a quarter inch neodymium square. And that's a uh, three quarter inch by one inch neodymium magnet. I'm not sure of the grades. But yeah, I uh, thought I would show you that because I found it very cool now there's one more thing that I found very interesting and you can see how the magnets actually trying to float around it's kind of like got a balance point to it if you look at the magnet it's not square why is it not square well whoever magnetized this magnet actually didn't magnetize it square so you can actually see like on a square magnet like this or a flat one like a flat round magnet you can actually see if the field is crooked, which I found very interesting. Tried all sorts of different magnets, and um, it really was difficult to get the the dimension here correct. Um, obviously, the more you can make this as a slug, you don't have to make it this shape. You can make it whatever you want. Um, I just happened to make it like that. I thought it looked kind of cool. So, really quickly, let me show you how I how I made these parts. Um, I turned these parts down on the lathe and I uh, uh, used a mill actually to cut the slots in the right spot on that acrylic. But you know, you can use anything. But let me show you how I did this. So here I've got my melting pot. This is an old pan. Do not use your wife's pan, she will be very mad at you. Okay? Don't do that. Find you a scrap pan at like uh, a Goodwill or something. And you take your bismuth and melt it down. 
Now this melts really low temperatures. I actually melted this on the stove. You don't need a burner or anything like that. Just stick it right on the stove. Uh, melt it down and you can see this forms the inside of my pan here. Um, and what I did is I, I melted it into a flat piece, a one pound piece. You can see right there. And then I scored it and just snapped it in half. And you can see it's really interesting stuff. It's, it crystallizes. Or it's got these these crystal structures inside of it. And actually, if you get online and look up bismuth, there's some amazing things you can do with getting it to cool just right <clears throat> at a certain temperature. And, and uh, I think you put it in water or something, pour it in water, and it crystallizes really, really cool. Anyway, so I melted that down, and I've, the reason I broke it into four pieces is so I could cast it. So these basically are the other two pieces right there. Now, as you can see, the bottom where it was against the pan is real nice and shiny, and the top is all oxidated and weird. Um, you'll have the same problems with your castings. You might be able to polish that off. I haven't tried it. So anyway, melt it down, and then I remelted these, and uh, then poured it into this nice little form that I made out of a piece of aluminum. Um, you could make slugs and just glue them on. It, it doesn't really matter. I just decided to try this shape, and I actually laid it on top of a, uh, this is super flat on the bottom, and I laid it right on top of this piece of uh, stone, I don't even know what it is, broken off of a table. Poured my material in there and let it cool, and as soon as I let it cool, um, because it was hot, it was expanded, and then when it cooled, it actually, um, I was able to run cold water on here and just pop it out. So that was kind of cool. Um, and then other than that, I mean, I just stuck it in here on this uh, little jig. You can see I just drilled a hole and pressed that right in there. Oops, lost the magnet. So, anyway, um, yeah, I guess that's all I got to share with you. Um, just something I, I thought I'd try to make a little video and, uh, you know, keep you guys entertained, if you will. Something learning. You gotta learn some new stuff every day, so that's something that I did. As you can see, I got this bench cleaned off. Um, everything else is kind of so-so, but uh, I'm getting there. And, uh, yeah, so that's it. If you want to check out more of my work, you can go to rwgresearch.com and check it out. And then um, I do not have this posted on there yet on a page or anything like that, so I'll do that for you sometime in the near future. So that's it. My name's Russ. God bless you guys. Have a good day, and uh, go watch some more videos on uh, diamagnetic levitation. Lots of really cool stuff up there. And I'll be posting another video about a different type of levitation later. Something I built a while back as well. Alright, peace. See ya. Bye.